uh, and I'll tell you a story, and I think these people have heard it. This is Tenyon. There's the beach, flat ridge, another plateau. I don't know if you saw that. Just before we finished Tenyon, we were on the same, I don't know the distance, maybe a half mile to a mile from the end. Company commander called me in and said, TJ, take your group out and see what you can find for ending the island. So I went out, a little scared, I hate to go out in the daytime because you're a pigeon and you shoot you. Well, we went to the end of the island and uh, coming back, a bunch of trees like this is, that's why I stopped at that picture. And uh, looked out there and looked again. Immaculately dressed gentleman, Japanese officer, he got glasses. I brought up my rifle, I was going to kill him. He saw me, pointed like this to me, and I said, oh hell, pointed down, told him to get in his stomach, and I said, do you speak English? They heard this story. And I said, he said yes, and where did you learn? California. And uh, I said, what's your name? Vice Admiral Coco Kuda the highest ranking officer in the Pacific at that time. He was in charge of the first air fleet, Navy Air Fleet. So I said, tell your gays to come out of the cave. And he said, they're, they're not coming out, they're going to die for the emperor. And I said this to him, why don't you die for the emperor? He said to me, in plain English, you think I'm nuts? Really? <laughs> I said, okay, they're not coming out. So we, we killed him, we went in, he came out, with two suitcases, opened them up for the end. And he said to me, I'm the paymaster, that's my money. I said, first of all, you're vice admiral, now you're paymaster. But between you and me, it's my money now. So anyway, took them back and turned them in. I left the cases with the guys in the front lines, took it up and was so I bet you within three minutes, four minutes, a runner came up and said, TJ, they want the money. I took it back. Now, my company commander, I told you, were very friendly, great guy, and he said, TJ, we've got to have the money. This man tells us, he's a vice admiral, he wants to go back to Pearl Harbor, but he wants the money. He's willing to cooperate, but he thinks he could take the money, launder it to Switzerland for after the war, or he wants to try to work a deal out, since he knows everything about the Pacific, that they would put them incognito someplace. Well, we killed this man, like I say, period. That's the end of the story. Now, in all my records, there's one thing stamped. Caution, another one stamped confidential. That's nothing has been able to find out about that Coco Kudo all these 70 years. I've written to Washington, the Navy, the Marine Corps, I've got people in Japan looking for him. He Can't disappeared. Find him. Disappeared completely. Now there's a naval intelligence fellow, Wayne Madison's his name as a matter of fact. He's done some research on it and he told me, Tom, they either took him back, kept the money and killed him like they've done a lot of times. Two, they did hide him someplace. But we can't find out anything. And we, I got a bibliography. The day he was born, right straight up to when he disappeared. And they made a mistake. They put Saipan, suicide, question mark. It was on Tinian where he was captured, see. But to this day, we've been now for two years trying to research what happened to that guy. No one knows. And no one's talking.